Hey everybody, welcome to the third video of our introductory AI in Node.js tutorial series. I am Paul Van Eck and I'm with the Cognitive Open Tech Group at IBM. This video will be a bit different and will focus on how we can use both TensorFlow.js and something called Node-RED to make AI-enabled event-driven applications. Now for those unfamiliar, Node-RED is an open source visual programming tool that offers a browser-based flow editor for wiring together devices, APIs, and services. Running on top of Node.js, Node-RED provides a low-code approach for event-driven programming with the ability to run on your laptop, on the cloud, and even on low-cost hardware like the Raspberry Pi. In this video, we will show how you can incorporate TensorFlow.js into your Node-RED applications to provide machine learning capabilities, enabling a wide variety of interesting AI and IoT use cases, like for example, a simple safety equipment detector with a Raspberry Pi. Now there are a number of things you can do combining TensorFlow.js and Node-RED, and this video will show you how, so let's get started. First, the easiest way to get started is to simply download and use some of the custom nodes that we have created and already made publicly available. The main and most general nodes that we provide are the Node-RED Contrib TF model and Node-RED Contrib TF function nodes. TF model node allows you to load and perform inference on any TensorFlow.js model within the Node-RED environment. This currently only supports the web-friendly JSON model format, but saved model support will be added soon. The TF function node is just like the core Node-RED function node, but also includes the TensorFlow.js variable so that you can make any TensorFlow.js API call. With just a normal function node, you'd have to make changes to your Node-RED settings in order to use external packages. So this node is more for convenience. Now with these two custom nodes, you are likely set to integrate any arbitrary TensorFlow.js model into your flow. You just might have to write some code for your pre or post processing steps. For additional convenience, we have made some nodes for handling some of this pre or post processing for you. To demonstrate, let's go over some example flows. The first flow is an object detection flow running locally on my MacBook. The idea here is for the flow to recognize objects in an image and annotate the objects with bounding boxes. To kick it off, an image may be loaded from a built-in camera, the file system, or by injecting the default image. The loaded image is passed into the preprocessing node as message.payload, where the message object is a JavaScript object used to carry messages between nodes. This preprocessing node is an example of the TF function node that directly calls the tf.node.decode image method with the predefined TF variable. The node produces a tensor for the image representation as the payload, and then passes it to the Coco SSD Lite node, which is an instance of the TF model custom node. This loads the Coco SSD TensorFlow.js model from an external URL and runs inference on the model. The result of the inference is two tensors containing the bounding boxes and their corresponding class predictions. However, we want a friendlier format for representing our results and not just tensors, so we need to post-process this result, and for that we use yet another custom node. This node will take in these tensors and output a nicely formatted object array containing the top found classes, their scores, and corresponding bounding box coordinates. This info can be easily used by the other nodes down the flow. For this, we just have to be sure to input the path or URL to the labels file. The rest of the flow here pertains to just printing out the image into the browser with the bounding boxes and labels also added on. We simply have a function node that sits on the input source image and waits for the model results to come in before passing to this bounding box node. This custom bbox image node takes these inputs and displays an annotated image. And that's pretty much it, a working object detection app. The only real code we wrote, at least for the object detection part, is the pre-processing, and for that it wasn't even that much. The rest are just nodes available for download publicly. As another example, here is a second flow that uses a birth sentiment model to classify the comments of a YouTube video and then chart the results. This also uses the TF function and TF model nodes, as well as another custom node called birth tokenizer, which converts text into input tensors for the BERT model. The model returns a softmax output representing the likelihoods of the input being both positive and negative in a tensor array. The flow then counts the number of positive and negative comments and outputs the count to a bar chart node. This bar chart node is from the Node-RED dashboard package, which allows users to create live data dashboards and widgets through Node-RED. So doing something like this, you can easily set up a dashboard to live monitor the sentiment of something like YouTube comments or tweets. 
If you want to check out these example flows yourself, be sure to check out the full tutorial linked in the description below. Now, the nodes we just went over allow you to quickly bootstrap an AI app. However, sometimes you might want to do something more sophisticated where you'd prefer to wrap the processing steps and model prediction into a single node. Or maybe you want to make a node that is more user-friendly. Well, these are definitely doable as making a custom Node-RED node is pretty straightforward. A Node-RED node is a Node.js package consisting of three main files. A JavaScript file defining the node's behavior, an HTML file laying out the node's properties, edit dialog, and help text, and a package.json describing the module's metadata. The JavaScript file is where you would wrap your TensorFlow.js code. It would load the TensorFlow.js model and run the prediction. And once the files are bundled and installed, the custom node will be displayed in the editor, ready to be wired into a flow and deployed. For consistency, let's revisit and expand on the Coco SSD model and code that we covered in the first tutorial of the series. Using this, we can make a dedicated object detection node. So starting from scratch, the first thing we need to do is make a new node project. After initializing the project, open the newly created package.json file and add tfjs node as a peer dependency. This needs to be a peer dependency because having it as a normal dependency causes issues when you have multiple custom nodes, each relying on tfjs node. Multiple TensorFlow shared libraries will try to load into the same process, prompting an error. So yeah, just double check, it's a peer dependency. Next, just add a node red section specifying the name of the node and its corresponding file. Now, we need to describe the node's appearance in the node red dashboard. So let's create an index.html file where you will add three script tags. The first one here will be for defining the node's edit dialog. Each property to be passed to the node should have an ID in the format node-input-property name. Next, we add the script tag for registering the node with the editor. The category defines which group to place the node under in the editor's palette pane. The inputs and outputs describe how many inputs and outputs the node contains. The defaults set default values for properties we defined in the previous script tag. Finally, we add the script tag for defining the help text, which will provide node information in the node's info panel. With the appearance out of the way, we need to now define the custom node's behavior. To do that, let's first create an index.js file where we will put this code to register the node function with the node red runtime and export the node. We also have an event listener being registered to the input event, which gets called whenever a message arrives at the node. Our goal here is to take this input message, perform inference on it, and output a nice payload containing the results. To help handle that, let's make a new file tfjs tutorial util.js and pretty much leverage most of the code written in the first tutorial. I won't go into detail on how this code works here, but if you'd like to know, please check out the first tutorial of the series linked in the description below. So essentially in this file, we have a function for loading the model, a function for converting an input image into a tensor, and a function for processing the model output into a friendly JSON format where we use some for loops and non-maximum suppression. We'd be sure at the bottom to export the functions we want to use in the main index.js file, which are load model, process input, and process output. Of course, we also need an array of all possible classes for the model. So let's make that in a labels.js file. Back to index.js, we load and save the model using the util file functions we just created. Then we update the input event listener where we process the input, get the shape, and then run the model. The output payload will contain the detected objects in the nice JSON response we formulated. To test out the node, we can use the node package yauk to make our custom node a local dependency in our node-red environment. Yauk is the recommended way of working with local packages without publishing anything to a remote registry. Looks good. So we just learned a lot about running and creating nodes using TensorFlow.js. Now let's talk about edge devices where using these technologies would be useful and popular. Any of the flows we just saw can be run on edge devices where Node.js is supported. However, there are some caveats for TensorFlow.js that I want to quickly cover. As you probably know by now, the node backend for TensorFlow.js relies on the TensorFlow shared library. When you install the TFJS node package, it will install the appropriate TensorFlow shared library based on the CPU architecture of your device. Currently, as of this video, TensorFlow shared library support for ARM architectures is a bit spotty. Depending on the version of TFJS node you install and the type of ARM architecture you have, the corresponding lib TensorFlow may not be available. 
However, TFJS Node does allow users to specify their own custom binary when installing TFJS Node. So our team has provided two binaries that can be used, one for ARM 32-bit for devices like the Raspberry Pi, and one for ARM 64-bit with GPU support for devices like the Jetson Nano. Check out the full tutorial below for more details regarding these, and we even show steps for building your own TensorFlow shared libraries if you need to go that route. In any case, with TensorFlow.js enabled on IoT devices, we can now make interesting flows. The flow here runs on the Raspberry Pi and leverages attached sensors and peripherals. Similar to the object detection flow, this flow detects motion, and if motion was detected, an image is captured with a USB camera and sent through the TF custom nodes for object detection. If a class of interest was detected, a specific audio clip is played through the connected speaker. Access granted. We can even change up the model URL to use a model we did some transfer learning on to support other use cases like shown earlier. It's all pretty simple and great fun with numerous possibilities. So that covers it for this video. Here you learned how you can combine Node-RED and TensorFlow.js to quickly and easily wire together AI apps for Node. Again, be sure to check out the full tutorial linked in the description below. There we go more in depth and cover additional things like deploying these types of apps in cloud environments. Stay tuned for more videos in this series to learn more about AI in Node.js. Thanks for watching.